Hello, Sam McGee, CEO of Crestmont Private Wealth. And today we're going to be talking about the difference between total return and price return. Now, why does this even matter? The reason we're recording this um, for you to reference is because as an investor, we believe that there can be times that you're not getting a complete information and taking a nice zoom out and explaining the difference between total return and price return could be valuable to you. So suppose you're looking at your custodial statement, which is either on paper or electronically online, or you're looking at your app at your custodian, and you're taking a look at a particular security. And that particular security, it could be a, a mutual fund, an ETF, a stock, a bond. You look at that, and typically, you are going to see the difference between the price paid and the current market value. And it may not include, unless you're using performance reporting software, the total return over that period. So I'm going to illustrate for you why this matters. What you're looking at here is a fact set screen that shows the total return of the S&P index, which includes dividends. Again, back to that example, if you're holding an ETF of the S&P 500 and the price you paid versus market value on your custodial statement or on your app, you might see in green or in red, a gain loss. That's a very important information, but it's also important information to see the total return, which you may not see in your app or your custodial statement. It may be hidden in there in showing you the, the dividends paid year to date, but not in aggregate in a total return perspective. And that's where you need to have performance reporting software. At Crestmont, we do utilize that. Now, it's a big difference. Taking a look at the S&P 500, total return versus price return over the last 30 years, you start to see where the separation occurs, and this is by the dividends paid over time. Now, let's use a more extreme example especially in a year like 2022 with bonds, with interest rates up and bonds down. Here you are looking at price return since 2020 of bonds. So we believe that bonds have a place in a lot of portfolios still today, even with those bonds down in 2022. Because if you look at the total return of bonds over the last 30 years, they are less volatile than the equity market. Unfortunately, most custodial statements will not have the total return in a way that can be kind of illustrated and understood. Um, and I believe that this example right here does illustrate the difference, especially in bonds, of total return, which includes those interest payments, as well as the price fluctuation versus the price fluctuation only down here at the bottom. That's a pretty big gap. Hopefully this has been helpful to you in understanding the difference between total return of security and price return, which is typically reflected on a custodial statement. We do believe the custodial statements are very important. They're required by law to be delivered to you either electronically or by mail. But we also believe it's very important to have the complete picture and have adequate technology and software so you as an investor can see what you are getting in a total return net of fee perspective. Hopefully this has been useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us at info at Thank you. God bless.